I'm Jared Brown, financial planner to Australian expats in Singapore and around the world. Welcome to my video series where we explore the key personal finance topics for Australians living at home and abroad. Money mistakes. We all make them, some we're not going to notice terribly and some may very well bite us in the backside in the future. Today, let's explore the eight most common money mistakes that Australian expats make and how you can combat them. The first and most common mistake Australian expats make when it comes to money is ignoring their superannuation just because they've moved offshore. Now firstly, superannuation is generally open to anyone with an Australian tax file number, whether they're working abroad or they're living and working in Australia. Now it's important to consider your own circumstances and look at whether you should be making contributions or whether you should be saving money elsewhere. It's also important to look at whether you should consolidate your super. Do you have insurance inside your superannuation? What fees are you paying? How much risk are you taking on? So remember to do your homework when it comes to your superannuation. The second common mistake Australian expats make is the old saying, I'll start saving for my retirement next year. And of course, next year never comes. One of the great elements of life is that no matter how much money we earn, we'll always find new ways to spend it. And Singapore certainly makes this a fairly easy task to accomplish. So how do we deal with this? It's very simple, pay yourself first. Set aside a certain percentage, whether this is the same as your superannuation contribution would be, or try and aim for a higher percentage and lock this away for your retirement savings. That way, as your income continues to climb each year, you'll ensure that you're making the most of your time abroad. The third common mistake Australian expats make is literally pissing away their money each week at the bars. And one of the key elements of life in Singapore is that alcohol can be quite expensive. Now a bottle of Pinot Noir and some good Australian New Zealand wine has declined in price over the years and there's plenty of happy hour specials, but it is very easy to quickly spend an awful lot of money on drinking each week. So remember, coming back to point two, pay yourself first. Ensure that your retirement, your savings goals are looked after and then you don't need to be terribly concerned about how much you're spending on drinking and dining out each week. It's also important to check out the happy hour specials. With so much competition in Singapore, it's not terribly difficult these days to get a cheap drink after work with your friends and colleagues. The fourth common mistake is Australian expats ignoring their tax returns in Australia. Now typically, if you don't own any taxable Australian property, like an investment property in Australia, you don't need to be filing a return back home. However, it's important to check your own situation and circumstances. If you do own a property back home in Australia, however, whether it's positively or negatively geared, or even cash flow neutral, it's important to be filing a return each year. And ensure that you're discussing with your accountant whether you should be filing as a resident or non-resident, because this can have a significant impact on both the tax rates you're paying and also any implications on your investment strategies. So be sure to seek appropriate advice when it comes to your taxes back home. The fifth common mistake that Australian expats make in Singapore is forgetting to ensure that their children are protected. And by this, I mean putting in place both temporary and permanent guardianship. Now, if you're not sure what these are, be sure to seek advice. Ultimately, these are the people that would look after your children and ensure that they're cared for in the unlikely event that something were to happen to yourself as the parents. So it's important to have these things in place. The efficiencies of Singapore ensure that children are put into the public system quite quickly. So make sure that you've got this covered. The next common mistake that Australian expats make is ignoring their personal insurance needs. Now by this I'm talking about life cover, 
disability cover, including income protection, and critical illness or trauma cover. Now for many, we simply ignore any form of insurance cover because we're not sure where we're going to be, or might think that we'll only be in Singapore for a couple of years, so we'll deal with it when we get back home. Or even worse, think, well, we've got cover in Australia, and that's enough. When in actual fact, we might find that the cover we had back home isn't actually covering us while we're living abroad. And we have in actual fact, left both ourselves and our families financially exposed. So it's important to do your homework, seek professional advice, speak to your insurance company, and ensure that you've covered all of the bases and protected both yourself and your family from any unforeseen events. The seventh common mistake that we see Australian expats make with their money is becoming foreign exchange experts or traders overnight. Trying to pick the tops and the bottoms of the Singapore Australian dollar pair, trying to trade currencies, taking out multi-currency loans, borrowing Singapore dollars to buy Australian property. There are a whole raft of products and different strategies on offer in Singapore and around the world. And it is absolutely vital that you do your homework, consider your risks, and don't create exposure that you're not financially prepared for. The eighth and final mistake that we see Australian expats make with their money in today's video is wasting the opportunity to really accelerate their personal finances. Now, depending on your own situation, how much you're earning, how much you're saving, what your capacity is to accumulate wealth offshore, chances are it's much higher than it was back in Australia, or at least proportionately higher. Now, how can we make the most of it? The very simple answer is to start as early as possible. Seek advice, map out your goals, outline what you're trying to achieve, set a budget, but more importantly, stick to the budget and review it on a regular basis, and truly make the most of your time in Singapore. If you have any questions at all about your own financial situation or any of the topics I've covered in this video, feel free to reach out to me on the contact details provided in the summary. Likewise, if you have a personal finance topic that you'd like me to explore or address in a future video, reach out and let me know. I'd be more than happy to consider it. Thank you and see you next time.